Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. Now, long-time viewers of this channel will know that a while ago I went through all four of the main Empire ship trees to discuss the naming conventions that they use. Why are the ships called what they're called? How do you pronounce what they're called? And what do those words even mean? And what theme do they follow? So I've already covered the Amar Empire, the Kaldari State, the Galente Federation, and the Mimitar Republic. If you're interested in learning about those ships, I will try and put links to that little playlist in the description of this video. Otherwise, today we're going to be taking a look at the five pirate factions, which is to say the Gurustus Pirates, Sanchez Nation, Blood Raider Covenant, the Angel Cartel, and the Serpentis. Ultimately, those are the five pirates. They're the ones we're going to be covering today. So if you're looking for things like Mordu's Legion, they're not technically a pirate faction. We'll be covering those in another video so this one doesn't go on forever. Now, if you do enjoy this video, you want to support the channel, awesome. Hit like, drop a subscription. Those both really help and they're completely free to you. I do also have a Patreon page you can pledge to support at. I've got a PayPal you can donate once off at. And recently, CCP have actually set me up with a content creator code. So if you're buying anything on the EVE store, at the checkout, put in the code CPTBENZY and I'll get a 5% kickback on whatever it is you purchase. Anyway, all of that said and done, let's jump right into the Gurustus Pirates and talk about their naming convention. Now, ultimately, the naming convention of the Gurustus Pirates is kind of a dangerous reptile. I say kind of because there is a notable exclusion to this. For, which is actually where we're going to be starting with the worm. The worm is the Gurustus Pirates uh, frigate, and in my opinion, one of the most confusingly named ships in the game. If we have a look at every single other uh, ship in the Gurustus Pirates tree, they are all dangerous reptile creatures, except for the worm. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, but isn't worm also a name for a dragon, which is W Y R M? This is what confuses me, because also Dragon would be so far out of the rest of the naming convention that it wouldn't make sense on its own. But Worm being like a little slinky, snake-like, tiny creature, yes, okay, there are some snakes that are referred to as worms, there are some snake-like creatures that are referred to as worms, like slow worms, etc. Um, but the Worm itself, I love it as a ship. It is a fantastic vessel. It's just, this is not where I would have expected the naming convention to begin. It's a modified um, Merlin hull. It is obviously drones and missiles because it's Gurustus. It's a great ship. I fly this a lot in um, things like Abyssal Dead Spaces. It's a fantastic vessel, but that name just confuses the ever-living daylights out of me. If we go up to the new destroyer, this is the Mumba. Now, a Mumba, or like a black Mumba or a green Mumba, is a type of incredibly venomous snake. And please note I do say venomous. Yes, I'm going to go on my little soapbox here for a moment. The big difference between venomous and poisonous. Basically, poisonous, if you bite it, you die. Venomous, if it bites you, you die. Venomous is about injected toxins, whereas poison is about ingested toxins. For something to be poisonous, you have to to eat it. For something to be venomous, it has to be trying to eat you, basically, or stinging you or injecting you with something. Anyway, Mumba. We used to get black Mumbas and green Mumbas quite regularly in Zimbabwe, and we did actually have a green Mumba at one point in uh, our garden in Bulawayo, which was ever so slightly terrifying. Very aggressive, incredibly venomous snakes. Get bitten by one of those. If you don't have access to anti-venom very quickly, um, you will die quite a painful death. But at least it's a fairly short one by comparison. I love the Mumba. I love the Korax hull in general, so when they announced that they were creating a Gurus destroyer based on that hull oh boy i was very excited i love this ship to pieces the mumba as a name i think is fantastic for a venomous snake it's fast moving it hits hard it it makes sense to me now we come to one of the most mispronounced uh, ships in the entirety of eve online this is the healer not the gila healer I know it's spelt with a G, but that G is pronounced as an H. Why do I know this? Because of the naming convention of the Gurusus pirates all being dangerous reptiles, and the Gila monster being a large reptile found in southern United States of America and northern Mexico. It's kind of got that overlap there. It's kind of like a Komodo dragon, if you know what I'm talking about there. Very cool, very cool lizards. They're not actually all that dangerous, they just look pretty scary because they're quite beasty looking big lizards essentially. Um, the healer as a ship however 
is oh, an absolute powerhouse. Again, very popular in Abyssal Dead Space runs. Just a great ship to fly. They look fantastic. A lot of fun memories had flying a healer, not a gila healer, not a gila or a gila, which I've heard as well. Healer, healer monster from the United States. Then for the battle cruiser, the recent alligator. Now, if you don't know what an alligator is, I, I don't really know what to say at this point. I think everyone around the world knows what an alligator is by the time they're sort of, you know, hitting secondary school, if not a lot, lot earlier. An alligator is, of course, a crocodile-like creature. Lives in water or near water, usually. Um, powerful creatures, often associated with places like Florida. Fortunately, the alligator is not quite as bad as you might ex expect something that is related to Florida to be. It is a very cool ship. Obviously uses the Drake hull um, with some modifications there um, to obviously be using drones and missiles. Very awesome ship. Loved flying this when it first came out. Um, I actually need to fly it a bit more. I've not been in it in quite a while. It's also worth at this point talking about the Gurustus pirates and a little bit about their lore. Essentially, Gurustus is actually the Kaldari word for kind of naughty. So these are the naughty pirates, right? What they have done is you've got two, uh, Karako and the rabbit, or no, Karako Kurosami is the rabbit, sorry. Um, and uh, my brain has completely fallen out of my ears as to who the other one is. There's two people who start up the Gurustus Pirates. They are both defectors from the Kaldari Navy. Yeah, Karako, the rabbit uh, Kosakami. There is another one as well. A uh, Fatal, of course, it is Fatal Gentile. Um, they are both ex Kaldari military. They left the military, deserted it, um, and started up the Gurustus Pirates. And they are literal pirates right they they fly through space and they attack random vessels and blow them up loot them extort them all this kind of thing extortion and anything you can think of a stereotypical pilot a pirate doing the Gurustus pirates do there's also an interesting bit of law with them as to why the ships look so similar to Kaldari vessels and it is talked about that some of the Kaldari some of the uh, Gurustus ships are essentially repurposed Kaldari vessels where they have stolen say the Merlin or the Moa blueprint and then modified it to their own needs the rattlesnake interestingly enough has however, is considered to be the other way around, in that this one is, it's theorised that actually the rattlesnake was designed by the rabbit first and foremost, and then sold off to the Kaldari navy to make the, uh, to make the scorpion. And one of the common responses I get to this is, oh, but it looks more like a scorpion than it does a, a, a rattlesnake. This is Eve Online right? The people who are naming these don't actually know what a rattlesnake or a scorpion looks like, other than what they've been told from myths and legends of old earth. We see that in the lore with a lot of things. If you go through the Kaldari ship tree and look at the names there, a lot of those things like hawks and that, they're not known in the EVE universe. They're very, you know, mythological creatures, basically, from old earth. Also, it was called a rattlesnake because that followed the naming conventions of the Guristus. Perhaps if they did know what a scorpion looked like, that's why the Kaldari Navy renamed it that way. They looked at it and, well, well to us, it looks like a scorpion, so that's what we're going to call it. Very powerful vessel, the rattlesnake. Excellent, again, for like C uh, C3, C4, and C5 ratting. Brilliant vessel. It does look really cool. I do love the Guristus sort of colour scheme going on there as well. I'm looking forward to painting those up for the EVE Online board game. And yes, I will be doing videos as to how I paint those as well. So that is the Rattlesnake. We then move on into the capitals, where we have the Cayman. Now, again, a Cayman is kind of like an alligator or a crocodile. In fact, it arguably is. It's the same sort of family, same sort of genera. Um, Water-based predatory reptile. Big aggressive thing. Very, very cool creatures. And again, for a Dreadnought, I do like how the Cayman looks. It's very oblong, you know, it's angular, but I do like how it looks. And I kind of wish these were railguns on the front or something. They're not. Obviously, it uses missiles and drones, but still. Moving upwards, we have the carrier, the loggerhead. A loggerhead is, again, a type of snake, I think. Um, interesting looking hull, this one. I can't really say much about the loggerhead, but because I don't really fly capitals, but yeah, 
named after a snake. And then finally, of course, the Komodo, the Titan. I've already mentioned Komodo dragons, largest known reptile on Earth. Very big creatures, very toxic bite. And they're not technically venomous. It's not a venom. It just is an incredible amount of bacteria. You get bitten by a Komodo. Uh, that wound goes infected very, very quickly and very nasty. Cool looking ship as well. Um, ultimately, the Kaldari Titan and the Mimitar Titan are the only two I actually really like the look of, and the Komodo definitely does it justice. This looks like a pirate titan. It does really cool. Moving on, then, we'll go into Sanchez Nation. Sanchez Nation only has four ships. Now, Sanchez Nation are essentially... They're kind of AI zombies, right? Sancha himself had this idea in his head that he could augment his entire nation by putting a chip in their brain. And this had a double effect. On one hand, the people at the top of that society were empowered by those chips. It gave them additional, like, cranial... Not cranial, cerebral abilities. They could think faster, act faster, just were better humans. It kind of augmented their mentality. On the other hand, the 99% of Sanchez Nation, it essentially turned them into mindless drone zombie slaves. You could just control the people with these brain implants and they would do whatever they were told to do, whatever they were programmed to do. Now, their ships are pretty unique. They look amazing. They are shields and lasers, which is unusual. Obviously, all the other laser ships in the game are uh, armor tank based out of the Amar Empire. The Sanchez Nation ships prefer shield tanking, have really nice afterburner bonuses, and powerful lasers. Now, their frigate, the Succubus, this wonderful beetle-like horned monstrosity, a Succubus is a demon, a mythological demon that comes to people usually in their sleep. It is usually depicted as a very sexualized woman or a female figure that uses her sexuality to ensnare males to drain them of their life energy. Very nasty, and we'll see that that sort of dream and sleep theme does go across a lot throughout these, especially when we then come to a phantasm. Now, a phantasm in modern psychology is referred to as essentially a, a very bad dream, right? A phantasm is like a waking nightmare. It's one of those dreams that feels so real when you're stuck in it. It's a form of psychosis. And again, in mythology, in sort of folklore, I suppose is a better word than mythology, a phantasm was a type of demon that would come upon you in your sleep. In some cultures, a phantasm would sit on your chest and make it hard for you to breathe and perhaps even smother you in your sleep. Other cultures believe that a phantasm was like a ghost that would just drive you crazy with bad dreams. Either way, very cool looking cruiser. A lot of very sharp appendages. Like, you know, these are technically sensor arrays, but it does look like you could ram someone with this and do some serious damage. Moving up then to the battleship, we have the Nightmare. If there's a more obviously named ship, I don't necessarily know it. The Nightmare is, of course, named after the concept of having a bad dream. A Nightmare. A horse that comes upon you in your sleep. Night. Mare. There's a lot of interesting mythology behind that as well that I won't go into in this video because I could talk about it for hours, but genuinely, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, look up the etymology of the word nightmare. It's got a really cool history and a lot of stuff to it. As far as ships go, I'm never a big fan of the upright ones for the most part. I think the Varga and the Tempest is the only line of upright ships that really gets away with it for me. The nightmare... It, it, I like it. I think it's a cool looking ship. It's just not amongst my favourites, mainly because of that vertical orientation. Moving on finally to their carrier, we have the Revenant. Very unusual looking ship that from the front looks a little bit like a praying mantis. Now, a Revenant, again, is like a ghost that would come upon you in the night. It's often used as a term for like a vampire or something undead that would stalk your dreams and nightmares. Some cultures have Revenants being very physical beings. Other cultures have them being much more slumber based. I like to think that Sanchez Nation, considering the other ships in the theme, are kind of slumber based, but quite frankly, undead and demon also tends to be like a running theme with these. Very cool looking ship. I'm not normally a fan of supers, but again, I think this one is so unusual, it does kind of appeal to me. 
Moving on then to the Blood Raider Covenant. This is going to go through quite quickly because none of these really have much in the way to say about them. The Crew War is a little bit unusual in the naming convention for the Blood Raider Covenant in as much as a lot of them are named after in-universe demons. Not demons from our world, but demons from the EVE Online universe. The Crew War is the kind of exception to that, and a Crew War is actually a type of blood clot, which makes sense when you take the blood from blood raiders right i love the crew or the fact that it looks like a very smiley happy boy as well there's its mouth long nose and it's like yay and you can even imagine that as a little eye it just looks like such a happy little frigate as it comes out there and neutralizes you to death and then rips you apart with lasers brilliant pvp vessel i've had a lot of fun in the past uh, in these Notably in Eve Echoes, actually, because in Eve Echoes you could actually fit missiles to these, which meant you didn't have to worry about your capacity being used by your lasers. So you could just go full on webifiers, laser um, missiles, and some nukes in there as well. And it was a uh, brilliant ship. Obviously, in EVE Online, it's lasers, neutralizers, webifiers, and Nosferatus. The uh, Blood Raiders get a bonus that means their Nosferatus always drain from someone, no matter the comparative percentages and, you know, gigajoules and things like that. Um, and the crew, I just love this as a vessel. It is such a badass-looking ship. It actually reminds me a lot of the uh, the Reavers from Firefly as well, if you've watched that. And if you haven't, you really should. You should not be watching anything EVE Online um, without you know, having an understanding of things like Firefly. If you don't know Firefly, you should do. The Ashimu, the cruiser for the Blood Raiders. Again, very cool looking vessel. Nice, narrow, slender hull. I do like the mottled blood red and uh, white color scheme going on here. But as you'll see here, ultimately an Ashimu is a name for a demon in the EVE Online universe. In those of the Empire's regions where naughty children are frightened into submission with tales of the Blood Raiders and their gallery of horrors, the terrible sphere of the Ashimu is known by all as a bringer of things worse than death. This is one of the few things that small children and capsule pilots generally agree upon. It's a nasty ship. It's named after a demon in Amarian lore. Um, and yeah, it is essentially the ship that is used to scare the living daylights out of young children. If you don't behave, the Blood Raiders will get you. This brings us then to the battleship, the Balgorn. Again, named after a child-devouring demon of Amarian legend, the Balgorn is the pride and joy of the Blood Raider Cabal. Though it's known to be based on Armageddon blueprint, the design's origins remain shrouded in mystery. Those of superstitious persuasion whisper in the dark of eldritch ceremonies and arcane rituals, but for most people, the practical aspect of the matter would be more than suffice. You see one of these blood-red horrors looming on the horizon, it's time to make yourself scarce. Yes. It's a powerful battleship, very nasty lasers, again, energy neutralizers and Nosferatus and webifiers. If one of these things catches you, it basically turns you into a floating brick with no tank, no way to escape, and then just rips you apart with its lasers. These remind me, the Armageddon hull actually reminds me a lot of the aliens from Pitch Black. Very good film again, but they've just kind of got that same kind of profile, this kind of curved beaky front to them. I, uh, the Geddon is not my favourite ship type, but I do like the Balgorn. I think it is a brilliant ship. It's got a lot of fond memories, and onwards we go. Then we have the Kamosh. The Blood Raider Covenant has found itself needing to match the capabilities of the Amar Navy. I don't think it actually says anything here about the name. Um, yeah, no, it's just literally the same kind of thing. But again, Kimosh is noted to be a demon in Amarian mythology, which is why the Blood Raiders have named their ships after that. Essentially, it's all blood and demon themed, but those demons are from Amarian religion, not from any religion or anything we know um, in our world of Earth. It is Amarian in origin. And again, very, very cool looking vessel terrifying thing as well with the amount of firepower this has and how quickly it can just utterly obliterate your capacitor. In the carriers we have the Dagon. Now Dagon is interesting in that uh, Dagon is a creature from the Cthulhu mythos. There is an entire short story by H.P. Lovecraft called Dagon about this creature that comes out of the sea over sunken Alia. And again, kind of makes sense. It is demonic. I don't think anything here is directly linked into that. Um, again, it's all here about the fact that it's all to do with the Sunny Sabik um, and the fact that they are an extremist Amarian breakaway faction that believe in purification via blood. 
If you've read The Burning Life, the second book in the EVE Online trilogy, you'll know the main character in that story is an ex-Blood Raider whose brother is denied a burial because his blood isn't considered clean enough. Um, this kind of thing. Blood Raiders are not pleasant people, right? They genuinely believe that they are just following a very aggressive religion that is all about purity and being clean in the eyes of God, but it involves essentially drinking blood. Capsulier blood is very good because it's pure. Um, in some cases, they believe that. In other cases, they believe that Capsulier is the most corrupted of all because it's essentially, quote-unquote, fake blood. Um, bit of a dark warning ahead of time here. Blood raiders are known to prefer children because their blood is naturally pure because they haven't grown up into sin yet. Pretty nasty. And then the Moloch, li uh, li libeled as the deceiver by the false faith, which is the Amarian faith, was truer than any so-called true Amar follower of the corrupted throne squatters could ever be. He it was he it was that understood the true nature of the universe. There is only one truth. Power is all. Naked, merciless force wielded by those with the will to grapple with it. We drink the blood of the powerful and the pure because to survive and advance we must feed on their energy and make it our own. This is the lesson of Moloch. His failure is of no moment. His glimpse of the great truth is all that matters. Yeah. That's pretty badass, and, you know, 10 out of 10, no notes. Awesome looking vessel. Brilliant bit of lore that gives you a bit of an insight into who the Blood Raider Covenant are, what they believe, and how they act. Yeah, let's move on, because it gives me shivers. And then we have the Angel Cartel. The Angel Cartel, based out of Minmatar space, they are essentially pirates, but with a bit more of it like a mafia leaning you know they're big on their drugs they're big on their prostitution big on their smuggling all this kind of thing ostensibly a lot of the minmatar republic actually quite like the angels because they provide work and they provide services that are often outlawed by the republic they are more tribal in their operations perhaps and there are many minmatar who do still long for the old days of pure tribalism rather than the united republic if you're familiar with The Expanse, you can almost think of the uh, the Angel Cartel as kind of being the OPA, but before Anderson and Dawes kind of get, uh, Fred Johnson and Dawes kind of get involved more, they're, they're erring more on that piracy and we run things our way and everyone else can kind of, you know, the way that they do it's wrong, this is how we've always done it, this is how we're going to keep doing it. Again, I can't really stop too much on the names here, because every single one of these, from the Azariel to the Makariel, Kizriel, Cinnabal, Mekubal, and Dramiel, are all named after demonic entities in the Eve universe. There is no actual note as to where these words come from in the English language. They don't come from anything Earthside. Whereas you can look, at, for example, at the Triglavian stuff and go, oh, well, their ships are named after this creature from Slavic mythology. You can look at the Kaldari and say, oh, their ships are named after various birds and things like that. The Minmatar being named after weaponry, after Norse mythology, that doesn't track with the drum, with the Angel Cartel. None of these ships are actually named after anything that you or I would recognise. They are purely Minmatar mythology and... Uh, like EVE Online interior, demons and ghosts and ghouls. The interesting thing that I can say, just to give it a little bit of a fill-in on this section, is that when you look at the Angel Cartel ships, they are very unusual. They're not like, say, the Guristus pirates that are based on uh, Kaldari ships. They're not the like Serpentis, which are based on Galente ships. They're not like the Blood Raider, which, okay, in the sense of a couple of them, like the Chemosh and the... Uh, yeah, they're based on Amarian vessels. These are completely unique in their design, and it is suggested that the Angel Cartel has actually gotten access to ancient Jovian technology. Jovians being the original sort of, I kind of want to say master race in the EVE Online universe. They are the race that represents the developers. They're the ones who gave the universe the capsule technology. Um, and like sort of the needle cast technology to be able to make all of that work and basically brought in the age of the Capsuleer, the Empyrean age. The Jove are the kind of godlike, crazy race of neo-humans. They've kind of gone beyond humanity at this point. Um, 
and become almost an alien race in themselves because they went very, very big on their genetic manipulation and all this kind of thing. So they have very unique looking ships and it's suggested that the Angel Cartel has found like ways, you know, old Jovian stockpiles of data in order to build these ships. The Cinnable does look a little bit like a cockroach. It also, from the front, I've been told this, it's a stoned samurai. I've had to live with that mental image. Now you all do too. Finally, then, moving on to the Serpentis. Now, the Serpentis are a faction out in Galente space, beyond Galente space. These are a bit more unusual compared to the other pirates, whereas the Guristus are literal pirates that are built on living fast, dying young, and just making off with all the loot. Sanchez Nation are the remnants of a brutal mind slave empire. The Blood Raiders are raiding pirates that go out there to essentially capture slaves and blood for their rituals. The Angel Cartel are your mafia-like uh, organization. The Serpentis are kind of your... These guys make drugs, right? They make drugs, stims, boosters, all this kind of thing. Dangerous stuff that is outlawed within the main four empires. They are a big corporation that exists on the fringes of Galente space um, and sort of works just in sort of a capitalist sense. These are kind of your evil tech company, if, if you want to think of it in the sense of that trope, and their names are all kind of vigilante, justice, aggressive kind of names. There's also a nice bit of interesting lore about the Daredevil here. If we look at the Daredevil, you'll notice that when we compare this to the other Serpentis ships, it doesn't look as much like the Serpentis ships that are based on Galente hulls. This almost looks Angel Cartel, right? It's very similar to the Drumiel. And in fact, if you are out in Angel space and you're ratting Angel rats, you'll see some ships with Angel Cartel names that look just like the Daredevil, but they're using cannons rather than the railguns that the Daredevil has. It's because it is an Angel Cartel vessel. The Angel Cartel and the Serpentis Corporation work very closely together. If you're often, if you're out in uh, Serpentis space, you will find Archangel stations. You'll find Archangel pirates and ratting anomalies and things like that. Essentially, the Serpentis hire the Angel Cartel Archangels to be like a private defense force for them, and they've commissioned ships like the Daredevil. This is a railgun ship, but it has almost all of the signatures you'd expect of Minmatar technology. If we look at its traits, yes, okay, it's small hybrids, but it has stasis webfire bonuses, which is a very Minmatar trait. This is, and it even says here, Little hard data is to be had on the Daredevil's exact origin, but it's believed that Guardian Angel Engineers created it to serve as a defensive complement to the cartel's Drumiel frigate. In both flair and utility, it closely resembles its counterpart, but it eschews offensive capabilities in favour of greater defensive potential and stronger armour plating. A tough nut to crack. It's a very cool ship. It is one of my favourite non minmatar vessels, and is but basically the reason that after I'd trained up uh, missiles and cannons as ma to maximum, railguns were the first weapon that I went for. Also because not a huge fan of lasers, as we know. Then we have the Vigilant, based off the thorax frame, or thorax hull. Looks a little bit phallic, if you're asking me. It even has a glans at the front. Whatever kind of dick joke you want to make on this, I don't think it makes a vast difference, but there we go. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. It's a cruiser. It's the uh, it's the Spentis Corporation cruiser. It is a modified thorax hull, the Vigilant. So we've now got Daredevil, we've got Vigilant. You can see already that kind of vigilante, our own sort of police force theme coming through here in these names. It does here also say, building on the thorax's natural strength, deadly vessel by both itself and in fleet tandem, a group of these sluggers is a sight to fear. Yeah. Was, uh, the Vigilant was the first Galente design the Guardian Angels would steal and make their own. So there you have it. That why do Serpentis ships look the way they do? Because they're built by the Guardian Angels from the Angel Cartel, which is why they either look like Angel Cartel or they look like stolen Galente blueprints. Continuing stolen Galente blueprint theme, we have the Vindicator. Based on the Megathron, a, uh, set out to create a battleship that would instill fear in anyone fool, or not, fool enough to square off against the Cartel or its Serpentis Protectorate. Oh yes. 
brutal, brutal ship, this one. Battleship-sized weaponry, but with strong enough stasis weather fires that it can easily handle even the fastest of frigates that try to tackle it and handle it. This is a absolute beast of a ship. I love the Megatron design in general. The Vindicator really works. To vindicate something is to prove it right, to prove it just, to prove it worthy. If I were to sit there and say, oh, my friends are all hanging out with this new guy, and I think he's a real douchebag, and they're all like, nah, man, he's awesome, we've been having a great time, he's a real friendly guy, and they sort of, you know, cut me out of the group because I don't like him, and I'm sitting there saying, look, this guy is a bad egg, and they're like, nah, we like him, we like him, if you don't want to be around him, that's fine, you can sod off, sort of thing. Then a couple of months down the line, he betrays all of them and acts like a complete douchebag. I would have been vindicated, right? That's what vindicating is. Vigilant, just on that subject as well, to be vigilant is to be watchful, to keep an eye on something. Then we come up to the vehement. Now, to be vehement is to be sure. To vehemently oppose something is to oppose something with all of your will. To be in vehement support, again, is to be in support of something with your whole heart. It is all about power and dominance. And this, of course, is based on the Moros, which is the Galente uh, Dreadnought. Really not one of my favourite looking hull designs at all. And even the Serpentis colour scheme and all of that just I, it can't rescue it i do not like the moros as a hull design and the vehement looks cooler than the moros but it's still a moros right again it says here angel cartels naval architects were designing a dreadnought class capital ship done using the moros hull as the basis for formidable mobile weapons after receiving the prototype capital ship engineers from the cartels guardian angels maximize the damage potential of the design for good measure they combine this with advanced serpentis stasis webification technology and again, we've got those big stasis webifiers there. So even though it's a capital ship using capital turrets, it does actually hit stuff. The Vendetta, based on the Nyx hull. The Nyx is one of the more popular supercarrier hulls. I understand why it's a very cool looking ship. And the Vendetta really does it justice. To have a Vendetta is to bear a grudge. To have a reason to want to be aggressive against someone. That is a Vendetta. This is a Vendetta. And what a cool ship. Finally, then, we have the Vanquisher, based on the Erebus hull. Again, not a huge fan of this design, personally. I do think it's cool, it's just it's not my favourite of the Titans. Vanquisher, though, to vanquish something is to remove it from existence, essentially. To beat it. To conquer. So you can see that all of the Serpentis ships have these sort of very powerful names. A Vanquisher, a Vendetta, a Vehement Vindicator, being vigilant in his daredevil actions. You can... it almost feels like V for Vendetta at this point, doesn't it? Um, in fact, they are all Vs? Yeah, that's only just clicked in my head. They're all Vs except for the frigate. Perhaps the daredevil should have been renamed something else. Vigilante would be a bit close to Vigilant. We've already got a Vexer, a Vexation, Vexis, Visage. There's all kinds. Of, uh, a V for Vendetta theme would be pretty cool in there. Anyway, folks, those are the five pirate nations. Very cool ships. I know these are popular with a lot of people. I want to cover some more of these in videos looking at taking, perhaps, say, an Ashamu out into a C3 ratting situation. Um, same with, like, ugh, I don't like the Vigilant, but there we go. We need to do it. We need to do it. Take all these out, showcase them, have a bit of fun with them. Which of these ships is your favourite? What do you like about these pirate vessels? Which one do you enjoy flying most? Which one do you think is the coolest looking? And if you were to design a new ship for one of these factions, what would you call it to get that to fit in with that naming convention? Or do you think I missed something? Do you think that actually one of these Angel Cartel names does actually have some kind of basis in the real world? Maybe I've missed something. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching this one with me right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.